Uh, thanks for staying with us. Now, we're still discussing lockdown and its impact on relationships. Um, Titi Lola Vaivo Adeni is a legal practitioner with over nine years of experience in public service. Having served in various capacities in Lagos State Government in 2014, she was appointed the pioneer coordinator of Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Team. Now, since her appointment, she has facilitated the ratification of two landmark executive orders by the Governor of Lagos State. One, the Sex Offenders Register and Mandated Reporting, and the second is the Lagos State Safeguarding and Child Protection Program. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waste Your Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Thank you so much for joining us, Titi Lola. Are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Good evening. Good Thank evening. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, now, we have been hearing a lot of reports about violence, you know, children trying to run away from their homes because they, they, the parents cannot stand them anymore, husbands, you know, and wives and all of that. You are in the forefront of domestic violence, especially in Lagos State. What is your review or what has been your um, um, summation of all the, the, the effect of the lockdown on relationships generally? Okay, um, so pre-lockdown, the DS reality, that's the Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Team where I work, we attend to on average eight new cases daily. But since the national lockdown, that number has increased to approximately 13 new cases daily. Wow. So that shows a 50% increase of reporting of new cases coming through our hotlines, social media, but more of our hotlines. And I don't think the, the, the increase should, should, should be a surprise because we have a situation now where victims or survivors are literally stuck, trapped with their abusers. Hmm. Before the lockdown, they take advantage of maybe going to the office or people that have businesses going out, doing school runs, or even the alleged abuser going out, leaving the home, which is supposed to be a safe sanctuary. But now, they are locked in. And so, it is not amiss for people to be reaching out, especially people that are already experiencing violence pre-lockdown, to be anxious, to be worried. They don't know the next step the, their abuser is going to take. Mm -hmm. People are, um, they need someone to speak with. They need to speak with a psychologist. Some people are experiencing violence during this period. You know, so it's it's it is, and I and I don't think it's particular to us in Lagos or Nigeria. It's a global of phenomenon. All around the world, we're seeing increase in reporting of domestic violence cases. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Right. So for um, cases like this, where do you think? I mean, with so much drama and so much, um, so many cases being unveiled during this um, current lockdown, where do you think this will lead relationships to uh, post COVID? And in addition, do you have um, any news of um, positive impact? On really, let's not talk about negatives alone. Um, feel free to talk about the positive impact of, of, of COVID on relationships as well. Okay, so um, I, I think negatively, we already have people that have left the um, abusive relationship. Some abusers have left upon receiving um, um, instruction from government, or this has come via mediation, online mediation. Some survivors or victims have run away to their relatives. So we expect that relationships are obviously strained. When I say relationships, I mean relationships that are um, experiencing domestic violence. We expect that strain to, to subsist during this lockdown period. And so we expect that post-lockdown, -lock we may have more cases of domestic violence because a number of people are actually suffering in silence. They are not calling, not because they don't want to call, but they feel, okay, if I call, you know, I may not be able to get all the services that would normally accrue to me as a victim. So some people are literally just waiting for the lockdown to be called off and then come into the office. So we expect that we would see increase in people coming into the office physically to lodge complaints. Positives, I think... Well, we're stuck with each other, so we might as well love each other. We might as well become more tolerant of each other. 
So it's possible that some relationships will actually blossom. It's possible that they may be, um, the love might be rekindled during this period. I mean, we're all together, okay. you know, and there are some people that have said in the past that um, their spouse has neglected them. They don't shower them with attention and affection. So, like so it is possible time. that this lockdown may actually <laughs> encourage, <laughs> encourage that. Yes. Okay, so Titilala, you're making me to just be laughing. <laughs> All right, I just want to ask one final question because you raised some, you raised something very important. I mean, people are, are just waiting it out because they are not sure how the effect would be, and you know, because a lot of people are, of course, they are considering that the Lagos State government is already overwhelmed with the COVID nineteen calls. But if there's a desperate situation and they need to make those calls, are your lines open? for those calls to be able to get through and they get the attention. That's number one. Number two, the impact on children, you know, what's the impact on mm. children? Because we've been talking relationship, um, friend, I mean, husband, wife. What about children? Okay. And um, so our lines are dedicated um, telephone lines to report cases of domestic violence, sexual violence, and child abuse. So pre-COVID, post-COVID, during COVID, we are operational, fully operational on the phone. And in fact, because we anticipated that there'll be increase in reporting, we actually added two lines to complement our, ex our existing hotline. So we actually have three hotlines now. We also have a USSD short code, star 6820 hash, currently um, on Airtel and MTN. We encourage people to take advantage of it. It's free, it's toll free. And so that, that's to address the issue of the um, hotline. We, government cannot shut down. This is an essential service. So people are still receiving um, services, albeit virtually. And in instances where we need to come in, rescue, report to the police, escalate, we are doing that. Awesome. So um, um, because we realize that every domestic violence case can be a potential murder case. And so this is serious. And we're um, attributing the weight and the, um, the seriousness that this deserves. As regards children, it's unfortunate because as you, if you, ha as you have survivors, females, for instance, children are witnessing this intimate partner violence. There's nobody for them, nobody to talk to, nobody to. They do sometimes they use school as an escape route, Absolutely. but now they're stuck as well. So they are also victims of intimate partner violence. Interestingly, we've had children reach out to us that their parents are being physically abusive towards them. We've also had parents reach out to us that they are, they are um, wits and they don't know how to respond because the children are being hyperactive or the children are misbehaving. So a lot of telephone counseling is ongoing. Our clinical psychologists are providing um, psychosocial support via the telephone. And we also have um, amazing non-governmental non organizations providing these services as well because obviously government cannot do it on its own. And so we're doing a lot of psychosocial support for survivors and especially children who are witnessing intimate partner violence. Thank you so much. I think we can leave it there. So just oh, to yeah. confirm again, the, the short code is star 6820 hash, right? Yes, yes, So please. Thank you so much, Titi Lola, Vaivo Adeni, for joining us this evening. <laughs> thank you for having me. All right, thank you. Okay, so Dr... Baba Lola, yeah. you were just nodding your head. I think you have a thing or two to say, you what? know, from, from all the conversations that she said. I kept, I, I kept seeing you going like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would you, what would you say to what she said? I mean, I was heavily invested in that conversation, especially because she mentioned children. And I like how that she said, you know, children observe everything. They're like sponges. They're taking everything in. They may not see anything. They may not look like they're doing anything, but they're observing, they're watching, and unfortunately, they're being broken down as well. Trauma, trauma, especially, you know, there are two types of trauma. There's an event trauma, a fire, a hurricane, but there's also a process trauma, which is part of what we're seeing with this COVID. There's also a process trauma when a child continues to watch one parent abuse the other, or a parent abuse them as well, and it takes a toll, not just on their emotions, their physical health, their education, but then continues you know, throughout their lives. And then they can start, you know, uh, manifesting mental health problems. Even as little as age five, even in teenage years,
they would get to, you know, adolescents, become adults, and not be able to have thriving, functional relationships. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all of this is a continuous vicious cycle where a child who had seen his father or mother being beaten by the other partner swear to themselves that, oh, if, when, if and when I do grow up, I'm not going to let this happen. Do but they do exactly yeah, there's, the there's same there's often thing. a compulsion to repeat because they have continually grown up to see it as the normal. So, I'm, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic work that they're doing. We, we get a lot of these cases too, but you see them at, you know, the other extremes. You either, when you see the children, we often say that a child is the window to every family. So if a child has a problem, chances are, there's a lot going on in that in home that has to be checked. Wow. Hmm. Okay, so um, do we have questions? Right. Um, wow, I didn't so check. <laughs> how do you, we've talked about the impact on relationships. Now, how do we keep these relationships intact? I saw this meme on, on Instagram where um, it was titled, when school finally opens, <laughs> so the woman drives by and tossed um, the she kids. Flung, she not us. She, she flung, flung them, out. them out. You know, so um, until school reopens, until, on, until um, the society uh, starts functioning normal, how do we um, handle, keep our relationships intact, both um, sibling relationship, um, parent relationship, um, um, husband and wife relationship, singles and friends, and how do we, are there behaviors that we should avoid, you know? All right, so, I mean, the first thing I would say to that spontaneously is not every relationship has to be kept. Okay. And then I also want to talk about the fact that, you know, relationships are a two-way street. How that relationships are worth fighting for, but you cannot be the only one who is fighting. Okay. So depending on the kind of relationships, okay, for, so for instance, you have your children, it's a loving family, fantastic, everything is going on in that family. If you have a, um, a family where there is trauma, there's abuse, please reach out and get help. Because and a sort of irreparable damage may be done that, you know, would just start biting our fingers and wishing that we had done something earlier to that relationship. Um, what are some of the things we can look out for? Aggressive tendencies, verbal aggression. It's not until someone hits you that it's violence. Emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, even financial abuse, denying you of the basic necessities of life may be signs that you look out for. You may also look out for a partner who is continually irritable, who would you know, threaten to beat, threaten to kill, mm. a partner who does not appear to be, you know, mentally um, sound what so if for that's instance not a partner what if it's a kid who is like constantly irritable and well so just drives you nuts <laughs> well, so <laughs> I, I think this is also a good time to be able to understand the people that we are so if you're living alone it's a good time to learn about yourself discover yourself emotional intelligence self-awareness self-regulation mm -hmm. if it's your children it's also a good time to Study know your them. children because all that we had always heard was how parents never had time for their children. Now everybody is in each other's faces. Excess time. Excess time. Right. In fact, I have a friend who keeps complaining, I want to get out of this house. I'm tired <laughs> of seeing them every day. But it's a good time to nurture these relationships. We may not be able to force them because this just became the new normal. But look for creative ways to bond, spend time with your children, understand them, understand the peculiarities of this day, generation, and this age. Especially because when you try to bond with a teenager or an adolescent, chances are they want to spend time on the phone. We never used to do this before, so where's this coming from? True. So parents have to, you know, find creative ways to spend time and, you know, show love to their children during this time. That's what I would say. Okay, okay so um, I don't know whether to read out this at this is a day from the UK in case Donald Trump is looking for him. <laughs> Says, ladies, Donald Trump is a basket mouth human being. All he aims uh, has all his aim is to secure a second term in his office come December. And he says, spouse should take things easy in this time of stay at home. Lack of money and irritation to each other is a is a is a major factor. Staying at home is not bringing money, and the government are not reaching out to citizens with their palliatives. In the UK, markets, food stores, and banks open on a daily basis, but at, at less hours to serve citizens. You understand? That's what he's saying, that money is one of the biggest reasons, you know, livelihood and all of that. But I beg to differ. You know, I, I think for me, personally, I have looked at the, the lockdown as an opportunity to bond with my children. I mean, yesterday I was having a conversation with my older son, and we sat down for almost an, an hour. We were talking because I study. I am someone that studies the pulse of my the people around me, their emotions, yeah. and all of that. But so, how do we learn, you know, to start relating? So I know 
that first of all, if you are irritating each other, it means that there was never a relationship. It was just maybe, um, what's it called? What's that word now? I can't, I can't for the life of me remember that word. It was a facade, yeah. right? So how do we learn to now to build a good relationship? You taking the opportunity that the lockdown has presented to us. What are the things, practical things that we need to start to do? All right, so I'll start as, as individuals. Know yourself. If you don't know yourself, it's, it's, we always say it in psychology, man, know thyself. Mm -hmm. Because it is in knowing yourself that you can even tend to yourself and then reach out to others. People should spend time developing themselves. Who am I? What do I want? What are my strengths? What, do you know a lot of people can't answer those questions? They yeah. can't do a SWOT analysis of themselves. So if you can't manage yourself as an individual, how do you then want to manage a relationship with another person? Which is, you know, very often what people say that, oh, sometimes um, I don't want to get into a relationship because that other person has issues. But the truth is, we all have issues. It's about being open and fearlessly honest with yourself and trying to, you know, do what we call a moral inventory. Where are my weak points? What can I improve on? How can I be a better person? You need to be a better person before you then start, you know, looking for a thriving relationship with other people. As for whether or not it's a facade, some people have had fantastic relationships for many years. And it's been a facade for many uh, years. Yeah, and well, it's, it's been a facade. But, you know, like you said, money, communication, mm -hmm. sexual problems are, you know, the top problems in many relationships in this country. So when you hear that, oh, for some people it's money, it's not. It's not unusual that, you know, when people don't have money, they're cranky. You have um, responsibility staring you in the face and you can't even meet the, it can be frustrating. It can be frustrating. So a lot, it's multi-dimensional. It's many things that we have to look at all at once. But I think that the best place to start it's from is from yourself. Yes, start from within, from Awesome. The I individual. think it now eventually now mm -hmm. evolves. Yes. did you have final thoughts? Oh, final question. As a single, because when the year started out, a lot of were like, I'm going to get married this year. <laughs> So much is going to you happen this year, and people, and people are getting, okay, well, the question is, oh, so what about singles who are hoping to mingle, but are not interested in online dating? What's your advice to them? What's the way forward for them? Well, I mean, so there's a lockdown now. Yeah. There may be um, restrictions on getting that, you know, to happen. What I would say is, look out for your friends. Okay. It's important to look out for a friend than to start looking out for a total stranger. It, it also doesn't mean that a friend, you know all about a friend, but there are safe places that you can, you know, start to build relationships from. I'm not against internet love or people finding love on the internet, but I like that people are cautious and they are sensitive to things. They're not in denial and they're able to call a spade a spade when it does happen. If it's not working, walk. <laughs> it may it may seem late, but it's, it's never late for the right person Absolutely. and at the right time. Right. I think we can wrap it up there. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Babalola, for Thank coming. You. You're welcome. <laughs> it was a very insightful show. <laughs> Madam <laughs> Single Lady. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't worry. I will really? help you. I will, I will deliver you from that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode at 3 p.m. And note that our repeat airs on Mondays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation, Sansi. Yeah, remember to keep all our conversations going on all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you are saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Lockdown is a stress test for relationships. The adversity of the pandemic and isolation is an emotional magnifier. So what this tells me is if your emotions were not in the right place, it's only helping you to magnify what, what's been there already. So keep it safe and start with you, like Dr. Babalolo has said. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank <laughs> you.